Hey YouTube, Tom with TK Designs here. One of my viewers, at Ron Martinelli, asks, Can you share how you enter a tapered ball nose bit into version 12? In version 11, I had to enter it as an engraving bit, but entering it that way never shows up as a selectable V bit for the V carve inlay toolpath. Well, Ron, that's a great question, and I am happy to answer it. Let's go through the procedure after the break. The problem with the V-Carve version 12 inlay toolpath is that it doesn't natively support any other type of bits other than V-bits. So if we're trying to select a bit, we basically only have access to actual V-bits. And some users find that to be limited as most V-bits only have the options for 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree, and 120 degrees. Not very effective for your deep carve inlays. This procedure is specific to VCarve Pro and Aspire version 12 VCarve inlay toolpaths. If you have VCarve desktop or any other version of Aspire below version 12, there's a link in the description of the video that shows you how to enter the tapered ball nose as an engraving bit for VCarve toolpaths. So the procedure. If you've seen my previous videos, I've created engraving bits out of a tapered ball nose. To make this easy, I'm going to make a copy of this particular tool. Copy over my settings. And I'm going to change this from an engraving tool bit or tool type to a V-bit tool type. Now the important thing here is that when we change this over, we need to make sure that our included angle becomes twice the side angle of the original V-bit. We'll go ahead and set the number of flutes to two, which is how this tapered ball nose bit is configured, and we will create settings. Uh, for that, I like to use a pass depth of about one eighth of an inch. Uh, final pass step over and clearance pass step over not important for this I go 1800 rpm at a feed rate of 600 millimeters per minute and a plunge rate of 300 millimeters per minute if you have an automatic tool changer such as I do you can change the bit designation or the tool number to a different number so that you can run your tool paths into a single pass we'll go ahead and apply those and there we have our V bit. Now, what you can do if you want to identify the tool manufacturer, you can go up to this box here and in front of the variables, you can type in the name of the tool path or the, I'm sorry, not the tool path, the uh, tool. So this is a speed tool W01005 tapered ball nose. We're going to leave the tool type, included angle, diameter, etc., the same. We're going to make sure we uncheck to set as default for V-bits because we don't want to use that and we don't want to ex update any of our existing V-bits because we've specified this name that's not a variable. Go ahead and click on OK. Apply once more. And then we can drag that bit to whatever grouping that we want to use. That's all there is to creating the toolpath. I hope you found the information in this video to be helpful. And if you enjoyed the content, please remember to like and subscribe with notifications turned on so you can always be alerted to my new content. Thanks for watching. Here are some other videos I think you'll like. See you next time.